Set primarily in Montreal, Chicago, and Detroit, as the world rebuilds after the First World War, the Porter depicts the black community in St. Antoine, Montreal, known at the time as the Harlem of the North. The Porter follows friends Junior Massey and Zeke Garrett and their families as a tragedy on the job sets them on different paths to better lives and on a direct collision course with one another. One chooses to exploit the racist system, getting involved in crime and bootlegging, and the other wants to inspire change by forming a union. The result will test their friendship, and their choices could put each other's lives in jeopardy. The Porters is inspired by the true story of the Pullman Porters. Intertwined is a historical story of how the first black labor union was created and the pitfalls of crime, prohibition, and racism in the early 1920s. The Chicago Defenders spoke with actresses Muna Trawe and Lauren Lott about their role in The Porter and why some of the themes in the BET Plus drama still ring true today. Um, I loved each of your characters really kind of shows some of the challenges of being a black woman, but in two very different ways. Can you guys talk about how you both approach the role and how um, you approach those two different stories, particularly dealing with colorism on, on one issue and then dealing with um, fighting with men <laughs> to get control, to, you know, have your own businesses and to pursue your own interests. How did you guys approach those? Well, I think for me, I just started at a very human level. It's like, yes, Marlene is a woman. She's a black woman. She's a mother. But, you know, the challenges that she's dealing with are actually things that, you know, women today still deal with, you know, um, questioning your husband and, and the depth of your relationship, having feelings for another person, um, what it means to be a mother of a, a black boy in the world. Mm -hmm. And not only a black boy, but a boy who's neurodivergent, who you know, his silence or the way that he conducts himself might be interpreted as something threatening. And you know that he's not, but you can't do anything about it. All these things that I think I connect to not only aspects of my own life, but I see out in the world. Mm -hmm. I just sort of tried to ground myself in my reality because even though it's a different time period, so many of the things are still the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lauren, what about you? Um. I just tried to approach this role from a vulnerable place. I think that throughout my life, I have pushed colorism kind of under the rug, just like our society does, mm -hmm. you know, but I, I didn't, I, I didn't want to feel any of it, especially my, I, I, my world. I was, I grew up um, pretty empowered by my mom and grandmother to love my complexion and, and think that it was chosen specifically by God and kissed by the Lord, you know? So I, so I always thought that people who didn't love it were um, ignorant. So there was a lot that I feel like I didn't experience with colorism in my heart. You know, of course I'm, I'm, I'm going to experience it, but, in, but letting it affect my heart and through this character, I had to open up to that, you know, and actually feel um, to feel those things. And I just, I just had to open up, you know, and, 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 Em embrace it you know I'm naturally very goofy Lucy is Lucy is not you mm -hmm. know and she she has a she has like a, a hard life she deals with um just the lack of love and and a, and a lot so I tried to tap into different places of my of my own life of my own experiences um specifically with colorism to try to portray as much honesty as I could to um to Lucy in those moments and I was actually surprised at how much it did affect me yeah, there's a moment um, where you get the lead role. Yes. And you go out there with so much anticipation and expectation. And it's like the reality of, of what society is saying hits you. And that moment yeah. afterwards, that vulnerability that you show where it's like you finally see something that you weren't anticipating seeing. I thought you did a great job of portraying that. Thank you so much. I mean, that is the that is a reality that you can do your best sometimes, even as just a black person. Yeah. And it still not be enough, even though it's better than what somebody else might be doing, mm -hmm. even though there was more work put into it, even more thought, whatever. It's yeah. supposed to this. You did everything that you were supposed to do. And sometimes it's still just not enough. And the only thing stopping it was you, mm -hmm. your complexion, what you what you um, what you look like, you know, right. 
very accurate about some of the things happening today. Uh, Morna, I, you brought up a good point about the realities that women deal with even now, the juggling of dealing with being wife, being mother, being ambitious and, and community minded, also while trying to raise children in that particular time and day. Did you find those similarities between then and now, some of the struggles that we deal with even now to be kind of interesting as you were performing? Yeah, it was heartbreaking. You know, um, I don't know how much of the show you've seen, but there's a moment with my son interacting with a police officer. And Mm -hmm. if that isn't tapped into what's happening in this current circumstance and like, you know, the, the pain of our community and the anxieties that we have now, then I don't know what is. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, the struggle of like working within a system and trying to change it, trying to create change in the system, getting you down, not only it being like the system of white supremacy, but like within, you know, the UNIA and a black led organization having to deal with that kind of gender discrimination and, um, Mm -hmm and oppression. I I think that's still very real. Like we live in a patriarchal society. We live in a society that has, you know, codified ideas of what it means to be a woman, what it means to be black and all these things. And I think that, um, you know, the boundaries and the limitations have changed, but the reality is all those things are still within our mind. They're still within our culture and there's still so much space for us to fight. I think it was really cool that you know, the story of the the porters is often told from the porters perspective, not mm. knowing about the families and the people that they left behind. What do you guys hope audiences get when they watch uh, the porter? I think like a real understanding of what it was for your husband to be a porter, because these men are working 20 hours straight. They're not getting sleep. They're going literally across the country and they're away from home. So even though they, they look great in their suits and they have this fantastic job that um, is inspiring to the community and their pillars within the community, they're working in really terrible conditions mm-hmm. and they're up against some, some um, I think really difficult um, work, like the, the structure of the, the railroad companies is just, you know, yeah. race to hell and, you know, they were up against a lot. Yeah. And so I think that I, um, I want people to walk away with a really expansive view of what it meant to be a porter, what it meant to be a black cross nurse, what it meant to be a black person mm-hmm. in 1921 and all the intersectionality. I hope that people take from this show, which I, I'm always going to say, but I, I hope that, um, they feel a connection that they can't explain. Cause you know, sometimes we watch them and I'm like, why am I so connected to yeah. this? And it's like, aha, your ancestors. Yeah, but right. I hope that people are, I hope that people are so genuinely entertained. Mm-hmm. You know, just the, the fact that this is a, it's a black story, but aside from that, it just shows black life. I mean, we have a, um, uh, such a diverse group of people in our story with the storylines. Yeah. You know, we each are, are going through different things, fighting through different battles, you know, but it, it's actually all just black life, you know, and I hope that people really care about that. And I hope that there's something for everybody on this show and that they love it. I hope that they're super addicted, that they that they have to stream the next episode. I was four episodes in and completely engrossed. So uh, you yeah. find pride, at least on this side, <laughs> but we'd like to take pride in saying we have a little piece of that story too with the Chicago Defender. Yeah. Thank you both for speaking with me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. Take care. Check out the trailer for the new BET Plus historical drama, The Porter. Junior. First thing. Shoes are important. No scuffs, perfect polish. And when you walk, walk like a man with answers because whether or not you have them, that's who you have to be. 
Zeke, can you make sure that my husband stays out of trouble tonight? Don't I always. Do you know who I am? I know you're in charge. Of every unholy thing that sets foot in this city. Queenie, the woman they call the Southside Butcher. When I hear somebody trying to sell me on a better life, I gotta ask myself, what is so bad about the life they got? If I wanted to get the porters into a union, what's the first thing I should do? Always go for the head. That's where the vision is. You think I need a partner? I think you need a man that knows every vein in them trains. I know y'all might be scared of what might happen if we do this, but maybe it's time we start thinking about what happens if we don't. What I offer these boys is not one day maybe. It is in their hands right now. But it's you, you talking, and that's danger. You sure you don't want to work with me? Sure you don't want to join the movie? I'm good. I spend the rest of my life bowing and smiling for people rather spit in my face than killing me would be a kindness. No one wanna be a bull-headed Negro and when not to be. I'm a poor Tapapsi, the most invisible man on the earth. <laughs> Reporting for the Chicago Defender and Real Times Media, this is Danielle Sanders.